Hey y'all, it's Lippy with Gemini Homestead. I know you're thinking, where you been, heifer? Y'all, I've been busy. I've been unpacking my mother-in-law who moved to Kentucky to be with us. And I was fixing to make lunch, which is, most of you know that follow us, our lunch is lunch and supper combined. We eat usually 2.30, 3 o'clock. If it's a late lunch, we call it early supper. We eat around five o'clock. And it dawned on me, I don't think I've ever made our family's favorite and it's called hot dish. My mother-in-law loves it. And I needed a one pot dish cause y'all, we still unpacking and trying to organize. Excuse me, I was parched. I ain't said that word in years. Doesn't that sound old? <laughs> but for the new ones joining, I'm known as Miss Lippy, and welcome to our channel. But y'all know the routine. I'm gonna turn you around. I'm gonna show you the ingredients, take you step by step to how to make this. And y'all, your family will love it. Now, there's only three of us. This will feed six people with no problem with leftovers. You can cut it down. We happen to eat leftovers and it freezes well. So let me quit jaw jacking and turn you around and show you the ingredients. We got to get to cooking y'all. Okay, the first thing you're gonna see, we got a pound and a half of ground chuck and I've got a pound and a half of Italian sausage. Now this is mild. This is where you can mix and match. It's three pounds of meat. If you don't like Italian sausage, add turkey. Basically, it's three pounds of ground meat, whether that be turkey, chicken, Italian sausage. We have one very large diced yellow sweet onion. And yes, I marked the brand off, but there's a box of panne. I choose to use the panay because I like the bite of the pasta. You can exchange this for like an elbow noodle. Now everyone knows what tomatoes and green chilies is. I use the standard original, you can use the mild. Here is five cups of crushed tomatoes. Now, as long as you have five cups of tomatoes, it could be crushed, it could be stewed, it could be tomato sauce. I prefer the crush, and this is five cups. Three cups of water, and I will be adding some chicken base, but I will definitely show you. It's an option, but there's three cups of water. And here is the seasoning. You've got a tablespoon of seasoning salt. You've got a tablespoon of these as heaping tablespoons of garlic powder. I looked and I'm out of garlic uh, clove, but if you were gonna use fresh garlic, you would use three garlic cloves smashed and diced. But there's one tablespoon, heaping tablespoon of seasoned salt, a tablespoon of garlic powder, two bay leaves. I didn't really measure this. I would say two to three tablespoons of soy sauce. I have a little less than a tablespoon of sugar teaspoon of salt, a heaping teaspoon of black pepper, and about a fourth of a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. I have found that this ingredients here fits my family's palate. Okay, all I'm gonna do is break this meat up and we're gonna brown it. I'm sitting on a medium to high heat, okay? Now, if you do have grease that comes out, which you will, I suggest skimming that off. And I'll show y'all again how I do that. Let me tell y'all a little secret. Y'all know this was a new stove that we had and I had to go electric, we're all electric here. Hopefully one day we can go to a propane. But y'all know these new electric stoves have those safety buttons. Y'all, I can't can, I couldn't water bath, but you see how it's kind of rocking? I want y'all to look, can you see the burner? 
we were able to find the burners uh, to replace the safety burner that's on the stove at a local hardware store. And we, re we got the large one here and the other large one. We're probably going to do the small ones, but the original burners that was on here with the safety had a five ring. This is a four. So on these large, large pots, it does fine. I just got to learn the temperature, what to set my stove on, and kind of keep a little grip here. But I'm excited, y'all, that we've got them safety ones off. And I've got them put in a box. But I'm gonna tell you what, it's a total different cooking. Now, it will maintain its heat. I imagine many of y'all know what I'm talking about. And the flat top, I didn't go with it because it does the same thing. So I knew that I could eventually replace the burner on an eye stove like this. But all I'm gonna do is get this browned and then once we get it brown, we'll get the oil off of it. Now you see, I'm not seasoning this, y'all, and you're thinking, well, that's what you normally do. No, but the Italian sausage has got plenty of seasoning at this point. So I'm just gonna get it brown, remove the grease, and add the onions. Okay, here's my trick. It's gonna take a piece of paper towel, because I still want to leave a little drippings in here. And I'm just going to roll this around. Now, if y'all are not comfortable with, with this, just go ahead and drain your meat. But you know what? See what it did? That's the last to do. All right, I'm just going to set this right here for now. Because we need to get these onions in here. The meat has brown. Not burnt, but brown. Now, I do have it almost at a high, so my stove goes to an eight, this is about a seven. And I'm probably gonna turn it down just a little. Get these onions in here. There we go. I'm gonna turn it down. I know I'm putting my arm in front of you. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get these tender, almost translucent. Two to three minutes, we're on a six. So I didn't turn it down much because I still need to remain that heat in this pot. But you steadily want to work it. You don't want your meat to have a scorched taste. Okay. This is where I'm coming in with all the seasoning, except for the bay leaf and except for the soy sauce. And the reason why I like to put my seasoning in right now is because this heat of the pot will enhance the flavors and bring out the oils in those dried seasonings. Okay, we are there. Oh, there's a big hunk. Now, I don't like my meat mush. I still like to have texture to my meat. Okay, we're coming in with three cups of water. You know what, I left my, my base, hang on. And I'm just gonna use this. And if we are measuring, guys, it's about a half of a teaspoon of chicken base, okay? Just, if you had chicken broth, you could have just used three cups of chicken broth. But this is the way I'm gonna roll because I'm trying to get this dinner done. All right, now we're gonna come in with the five cups of crushed tomatoes. There we go. And the tomatoes 
with green chilies. Now with the soy sauce, we're gonna get that blended very well. We're sitting at about a six. Get this well blended. We want to bring it up to a boil. I'm probably gonna move it up some. Y'all, it's really a throw together and it is absolutely delicious. Okay, now I'm gonna come in with my two bay leaves. Now these bay leaves, we came from Louisiana. I had a friend of mine that had an enormous bay tree. Y'all, I've got three gallons of bay leaves in the freezer. I don't know if I can grow a bay in Kentucky, but I sure know how to get back to Louisiana and get a refill. Y'all see how it's coming up to a boil? But I can stir it down. But it starts bubbling as soon as I stop stirring. That's what you want. You don't want a rolling boil. Okay, we're where we need to be. I'm gonna turn it down to about a two and a half. I'm gonna cover it and I'm gonna stir it every 10, 15 minutes, probably every 10, for about 45 minutes. About every 10 minutes for about 45 minutes. We're gonna stir it, because we wanna make sure it's not sticky. And then we go to the final step, and that's the pasta. If y'all could smell this. Y'all look at that. Now we're still sitting on about a two. It's been 45 minutes, and I've come in and just stirred about every 10 minutes. Now we're gonna go in with the pasta. This is about three-fourths of a box. I guess I could have measured. Well, I did put it, I don't know, guys, about three and a half cups, I'm guessing. Look at that. Dry pasta. Now I'm leaving these bay leaves in. I'll remove them at the end. Okay. Now all I'm gonna do is cover it back up and we're gonna let it go about 20 minutes. We're not gonna lift this lid. Y'all look at this. It's been about 20 minutes. I'm gonna give it a good stir. And we're going to put the lid back on. Get these noodles down in here. The smell is out of this world. Put the lid back on. Turn the fire off. Wait 30 minutes. It's time for coffee. See you in 30. It's taste test time, y'all. Now you'll see I only have a little bite because it's not time to eat. We'll make us some uh, garlic bread to go with this fine meal. Seriously, y'all gotta try. Now y'all know this is gonna be hot. But here we go. We're gonna we're gonna try one of these pastas. That's gonna be so hot. Mm -mm. Y'all, it is absolutely delicious. Now, like I said, you can use um, macaroni noodles, elbow noodles. That's what I grew up eating them with. But when I was introduced to this fancy noodle like a panay, it has a bite to it. Now, if you don't like that bite in a pasta, definitely use an elbow noodle. Now, I also wanted to say, 
A lot of times, if I don't have Italian sausage, I'll use like two pounds of ground chuck, a pound of ground pork, or a pound of ground turkey, as long as it's three pounds. So if I don't have the Italian sausage, I will go in and add about a tablespoon and a half of Italian seasoning. I wouldn't go more than that, because that's a strong, strong seasoning that you can't take back out. Now, I eat mine just like this. Buddy is gonna shave fresh Parmesan cheese or Romano cheese over the top of his. But y'all, you gotta give it a try. The best thing about this dish, change out the meats to fit your family's flavor, as I put it. I'm gonna take one more bite, then I gotta edit this video. Mm. You gotta try it. Now see, I didn't took a bite, so I can't talk. So I'm gonna talk like this. Until next time, stay safe and God bless. Mm. Sauce bon. That means it's all so good.